Hi, this is Mark. Congratulations. You have found this amazingly awesome show. Chances are you're listening to it right now on whether it's iTunes or Stitcher Radio or some other mobile app that allows you to stream this amazingly awesome show to your ear holes. And I can't stress how awesomely amazing the show really is. But did you know that you can also catch the latest episode of this show on the Tangibound Network? That's right. Go check out TangibondNetwork.com. You can look them up and you can listen to it right there. It's even mobile friendly. What more could you ask for? Which means you can pull it up on your iPhone or your Android, even your Windows phone. Yeah, who has one of those? But still, point remains. You can do it. You can do it. Check it out. TangibondNetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. Check it out. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday. All the way to Sante But I wouldn't have it any other way I don't care how you're doing What's up or how's it hanging I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. Welcome to the crazy life, everyone. I'm back. Yeah, I know I've been kind of off and on for, for like the last few months or so, so I apologize. Um, one of the New Year's resolutions for myself is to get more consistent because I've been uh, kind of up and down and all over the place in the last uh, six months or so. So that being said, I'm Jen for all you new people and for all our time. Hi, Jen. <laughs> hey, 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 hey y'all. But uh, hi, all the new people. And welcome back. <laughs> To all of our regular listeners, I know uh, Brian and Heno have been doing an awesome job um, when I'm not able to to join them. Um, so thank you guys for filling in and taking over and all that good jazz. Um, yeah, and Heno and Brian are with us tonight. I'm not just talking to thin air. So hi, guys. <laughs> hey. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho. <laughs> Uh, I just distorted the microphone. <laughs> Yay, distortion. Uh, well, so that being said, how have you guys been? How have your weeks been? What's up? What's new? What's happening? Well, I had a day off today. Nice. That was kind of nice. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of drama getting my day off today, but <laughs> I don't feel bad about it at all. There you it, go. It was funny. Before we started podcasting, we were talking about vacation time off and the holidays and blah 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 and and uh the uh there's i heard somebody they says this uh sharon shared this with me where uh your lack of planning does not constitute an emergency for me yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and uh and not that it's emergency but i'm just like uh, christmas day is a holiday it's in the employee manual i'm taking a day off yeah. I don't care. I don't care that the rest of you are going to be. It, and here's the funny part. I will be there on Christmas Day. I will be the one person that works all day Christmas Day. I have no problem with that. I'll be there the day after, too, on Monday. I have no problem with that. And this idea that me taking Thursday off is not cool because we're so slammed right now. And it's like, you know what? That's not my problem. Yeah. That's a day off in the employee manual. I don't care. If it happened on a Wednesday – it would, you know, it, we'd all get Wednesday off. It's a four day work week. And, and it was hard because it's the part of me where I, I feel bad afterwards that I put my foot down. 
Yeah. You know, I'd feel bad, but I'm also faced with somebody that is very wishy-washy. You know, if he just flat out came out and said, everybody's working on Monday, I don't care. With that amount of authority, okay, there'd be some grumblings, but mm-hmm. we deal with it. But, but because he's really wishy-washy, I just, I, then I, I, I'm going to make my decision for myself. That's best for me. Yeah. You know, and I ended up dragging a bunch of employees in with it too. I said, you know what? The, our maintenance staff is going to take care of this. You know, evidently my GM scheduled meetings on Monday and I'm like, well, that's our recognized holiday. Yeah. It's, I don't know why you'd schedule holiday, you know, meetings. Oh, well, all of our home, you know, like, cause all of our owners are in town. So it's a good opportunity to meet with people. That's great. It's still, that's our holiday. I know it sucks. So now what he's going to do is he's going to want to change that so that everyone does have to work on Christmas Day. But I'm like, yeah, but five, five, you know, four or five years, it'll be on weekdays. Yeah. What are you going to make everyone show up for when no one's even, you know, no Mm -hmm. one's needed? Right. No, you're not going to. You just want the exception right now. You know, it's like. You could have played it a month ago. So there, but there's my vent. I'm still feeling a little, I just have residual over it because I, I still have issues with asserting myself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel confident in asserting myself. I still have, what do other people think of me issues? Yeah. I still am concerned about, you know, how, how I'm viewed now, you know, was I the, you know, the, of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Sure. You know, or did I stand up for people that that appreciate it? I don't know, but I, you know, I still, I'm. That's just part of. There's probably a lot of people that can identify with it because a lot of people do like will behave like they'll they'll do. Uh, they'll feel guilty about trying to get a day off or whatever, um, or or taking that day off that they were supposed to have. You know, if everybody else is coming, it's like you know how different times. You know, a place will be like. Well, you know, what are you doing? Um, I'm going home. Be like, well, everyone else is staying late. Be like, all right, cool. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but yep. and then you think about, you know, but you feel bad because you don't want to be the one who wouldn't do it or, you know, you want to be a team player or, you know, it's mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, you know, I'll, I, I did that kind of stuff for years and years. And, you know, in a lot of places, what you realize is, when you put in all of that, the places will take everything from you. And then the one time when you're like, Hey, can I leave an hour early? And they're like, Ooh, yeah, no, you know, and you're like, wow, the one time I ask you for something, you know, like I'm, I come in all the time on my days off. I, this, I, that, you know, and it's like, you know, a lot of the places won't show you that same regard, you know? Yeah. So I've never, yeah. a- ever since I kind of woke up to that, I quit feeling bad about, or or, or, I still, not quit, but I felt a lot less badly about, you know, standing up for myself and and taking what I was supposed to get, you know? Yeah. Because there's, it's, I've learned to look at it a little bit bit differently than I have in the past. Because I'm with you guys, you know, I've always felt guilty about, about asserting myself, standing up for what I need. Um, as opposed to what the team needs. And, but now that I've stopped and I looked in a different way, your boss in your management, if they don't, and that's a big if, but if they don't mandate people staying late, but everyone just naturally stays late, they're choosing to stay late of their own accord. The management is not asking them to do this. They're just giving. Yeah. It's like going up to somebody and just giving them a $5 bill every single day. Then when you're poor, going back to them going, hey, can I have a couple dollars back? And they're like, well, no, yeah. because you've been giving me all this money. It's like, yeah, I've been giving you all this money. I never asked you for it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like so well, it was just random, you know. And that's the thing. When you stop and you think about it that way, you're like, this is silly. Why am I just giving somebody stuff and then resenting them for giving them <laughs> stuff? Yeah. And that's why I'm not I, – I am reminding – I have to remind myself that I am working on Christmas Day. Yeah. I am working all day. I have – that – 
The thing is that the issue is not with me in particular because I think that's a pretty worthwhile sacrifice. I'm willing to be the maintenance guy all day long and be on call on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. Nobody Mm -hmm. else has to be there. Now, we will have people that be there because we always try to have this coverage. It's it's just this Monday thing where the whole office staff is there because somebody scheduled – things happening on that day there's a and there's arrivals coming which we have no control over people are showing up they they show up but the reality is is our maintenance staff doesn't have to be there yeah we don't and and the gm though is going well if everyone else is here then you know if all the if these people are here then everyone has to be here and i'm like no yeah we don't especially not like like you said if it was planned a month ago it would have been different but to pull that on you the week of it's like no I, I'm sorry. But the fact that, no. yeah, and I had to bring it up. So, what are we doing about the holiday? You know, yeah. a week before, I had to bring it up. It's like we, we can look at this on a calendar. It happens every five to six years. The last time, and it was great as he looked at me. He's like, "Did you work Christmas Day the last time this happened?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Was that what? Like seven years ago?" I'm like, "No, it was only five years ago." And it's like, "Yeah, I did." And the next time will be 2022. It's like, yeah, just deal with it, you know. So right. now it's like, and I looked at him. I said, "Hey, if you wanna, if you wanna make it so all of us work Christmas Day, that's great. But you got to give us something in return. Give us the day after Thanksgiving. Give us another floating holiday. I don't know what it is." Yeah. But it's it's they they need to deal with it. But it's this like you said, it's the last, last minute stuff. And then and then the, there's the yeah, I don't I don't know if we, we do certain things a certain way all the time. And to have somebody say, no, we're not going to do it that way because it doesn't fit with my schedule. Yeah, that's actually what it kind of reminds me, me of is, is like it reminds you of almost uh, it, it almost reminds you of uh somebody that's the uh, misery loves company mentality. You know, it's kind of like, well, I've got to be here. So everybody else is, and it's like, no, that sorry that you have meetings that day. It's not, I didn't make those meetings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why I wish people would just accept that choice. Like I accept the choice of working on holidays. I have yep. no problem. With yeah. That. I never did either. I'm yep. willing to be here. I have no problem with that. I just want a little something in return and that's another a day off somewhere where i can choose yeah like i used to do that with days off you know when i was a a key holder at the video store they would always ask each of the you know management key holders whatever like hey what um what holiday would you prefer off because we kind of rotate type thing and i was like well look i will work open to close on christmas you know i'll work thanksgiving easter i don't care so i was like but I want New Year's Day off because my dad and I used to watch football all day. That was back when all the bowl games were on, you know, New Year's Day, not spread out across two weeks, you know. So I was like, I want that day off because, well, first of all, you know, also I was generally hung over from New Year's Eve, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that was actually, that's what it was. I was like, I want New Year's Eve night. I'll work New Year's Eve day or, you know, but give me the night and give me New Year's Day off. I will work every other holiday. I don't, I will never gripe yeah. about it. And, you know, the one year somebody was like, well, somebody else wants New Year's Day. And I'm like, they're not working Christmas, Thanksgiving, yeah. and they want New Year's Day. And I was like, no. I was like, I never gripe about it. You know, mainly because I was like, look, if you want me to come work a video store and make 22 bucks an hour, I'm in. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm getting double yeah. time all day. And there was one Christmas I worked open to close. Um, but then the following year, apparently they didn't like paying me that much money. So there was a company mandate that I wasn't allowed to do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but well, that uh, was, and that was the thing that came up here was like, Oh, d- don't you want double time? I said, yeah. no, I yeah. don't. I, yeah. Time off is more valuable to me. Yeah. I don't want double time. And evidently at the employee, I haven't, I was tempted to text one of my coworkers today, but evidently the GM was going to offer to the other employees like, Hey, if you want to get double time, and I'm like, you know, that's a rotten tactic. It is. Because we'd already, our maintenance staff had agreed how we were going to help each other out for this weekend. And he's going to throw it out there. And that is a little coercive. He is. He's so, try, trying to get people to break the ranks. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah that's and, exactly and just, what it was. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I'm bringing it up here because it always remind you know, it reminds me, it reminds me that I still, you know, there, I have these, I have things I need to be aware of, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the fact that I'm sensitive to uh, other people's. I don't let it control my life anymore, but it's still there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that is why 
it's important for me to do everything I can to keep myself in a, in a good state of wellness so that, that, you know, my, that these are part of my character defects and that they don't become a major shortcoming in my life. It's like, I still am concerned about what other people think of me, even when I assert myself and I feel I'm right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, All right. I, I think so. this is a good thing though, too, because this, what you did was you approached this, you analyzed um, the situation also, because there are some times where you can look at something like there are times like you work at a place and be like, Hey, can you stay late? Cause everybody else is staying late. And it isn't as much a peer pressure thing as much as it's, Hey, we really could use the extra yeah. person. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, Definitely. I can. Sure. No problem. I'm in, you know, yep. um, it, it's the ability to, from the outside, look at something and go, is this urgent or is this just, you know, or is this something that can be, that'll be okay if I don't, you know, do this, uh, w- you know, for them. Yeah. And, and with you doing that, it's, you know, you take a stand for yourself, which is always important, you know, and, but that's, that's how you choose those fights is cause you know, if you stand up for yourself every time with work, it's going to get in your way somewhere, probably a good amount of times, you know, and it's good to sometimes, you know, it's it's good to give and, and you know, get, it, like you were saying. Absolutely. It's like, well, yeah, yes. well, if I do this, I'm, I, we want something in return. We're not just going to give you, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like identifying value or your value and asking for fair value. I, I you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And it's. And making sure that you identify what's being asked of you. Yeah. It's like what's truly being asked of you. And are you, is it a peer pressure thing or is it like the company actually asking yeah. you to well, give up it's something? Like I remember, then, you know, sorry, Jen, mm-hmm. sorry. Go ahead. Go sorry. ahead. I said, and that's, it's important to make those distinctions so that we can understand. Um, you know, I work with a lot of parents and they will say, you know, I've got to leave by a certain time to pick my kids up mm-hmm. or to take care of my kids. And I made a decision when I started working there that when I got went on the shift I'm at, if I get off at three, I can have lunch with my husband before he goes to work. So I leave exactly at three. Mm-hmm. I don't care how busy we are. I don't care what's going on. He is the equivalent of me picking my children up from school. Yep. You know, it's if you have to leave to pick your kids up from school, I have to leave exactly at three so I can have lunch with my husband. Well, he I, works nice. I don't get to see him very often. It's my that's my life. Even yeah. even if you were gonna go home and stare at a wall. That's your right. Yes. Exactly. If your if work day my... ends at three, your work day ends at three. If you choose to stay, mm-hmm. that's another story. That whole thing with parents, because I, I, that used to make me so mad how when I was working places, like parents were allowed to leave a little bit early because, oh, well, they got to go get their kids. And I'm like, so? Yeah. That's their problem. You know, like they should figure that out. If they can't work until four, they shouldn't have taken a job where they can work till four or they should have specified I have to be out of here by three every day or whatever it is. It's like, why is their time valuable? But mine isn't. It reminded me of, you know, places that would allow uh cigarette breaks. But if I was like, hey, can I go stand outside for five minutes? They'd tell me no. And I'm like, why? Exactly. Why is my time well, less valuable? They're doing nothing. Yeah, yep. exactly. And and it's the, and that, that same idea. Yeah, exactly. And we're not by no means. Please do not, you know, misunderstand. We are not saying there's that there's anything well, wrong here, about parents here and, i'll, I'll know, give you how important that is i'll yeah. give you my counterbalance to that which was i always volunteered to work uh halloween because mm. i didn't mm-hmm. have kids yeah. okay there's yeah. that's that's what uh, the way you know yeah. like i was very aware of that stuff but it's just like why can't i ever leave early but they can and it's like yeah. like oh well they have a good reason it's like well, we're not busy. I just want to leave. Like you would normally send someone home. You know, why is it okay for them to short me on a shift? You know, yeah. like that, that's kind of my thing. It's like everybody's time is equally valuable because you have exactly. kids or whatever else. Don't get me wrong. I didn't really care if they left early. It was just more that it's like, Hey, you know, extend that to me once in a while. 
you know, yes. give me the option. Hey, once in a while. Hey, do you want to take off now? Like, cool. You know? Um, yeah, that's, that's why I told him. I'm like, I will come in early. I have no problems coming yeah. in early. I said, but I just won't stay past three yeah. unless it's very specific reason yeah. or, you know, yeah. there, there has to be something, a good solid reason for me to stay late. Us being busy. That's not a good reason for me to stay late because yeah. We're going to be busy a lot. <laughs> you know, that's not one specific time. That's yeah. going to be a good portion of the time. And then when do I draw the line? When we're not busy? When we're not going to be busy at 6 p.m., 8 p.m.? Yeah. And I get off at 3? No. It's like, that. that's not my problem. Yeah. It's this idea that that somehow, like the day be- yeah, uh, yesterday, one of our guys was off. On Monday, one of our guys was off. Monday was particularly hard because there were two guys off. We killed ourselves on Monday. It was a hard day. We also had an, um, an emergency. The pool wasn't heating. And so my boss and our, you know, one of our kind of general groundskeeper guys, they were busy all day. So I got to do all of the run around and do this and, you know, I have no problem with that. Yeah. I, it's okay. I busted my ass. Just let's just not make these like what we're talking about is a lot of these these kind of moral judgments over yeah. something's more important than something else. And I think yep. the point is, is we don't want to do that with employment. Yeah. And there are and and there the, the flat out matter is that some things just aren't fair also. And I'm OK with that. Sure. Too. Absolutely. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Most keepers are going to be working more than we are at this time of year because yeah. there's a lot of people here. Yep. I certainly hope the housekeepers get lots of extra time off, you know, when we're not busy. Yeah. Or whatever it is, you know, it's these kind of and the main thing is when things get applied arbitrarily is where it really gets to me, you know, and and like a lot of like the kids thing is that's a great, you know, it's like I don't have kids. Well, guess what? If my dog's sick, I I don't care. You yeah. Know, oh well, yep. it's different than my. No, it's not. I don't care. Yeah. Not to me. It's, it's like, not. Not yeah. to me. It's not. Mm. You don't get to judge. Yep. Your you don't get to put a value on your life over mine. Yeah, that, and that's that was my works. thing. Yep, exactly, and that, that's what I was getting at from the the very beginning is that you know when you recognize that you know like hey this is important this is you know like you said this is owed you know this is told to us we're getting this and just mm-hmm. pulling something out last minute it'd be different if something catastrophic happened you know like exactly. if something big yeah. happened and they were like. Hey, Not a question. this affects the integrity of the building. And I don't mean, you know, like reputation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we got a, yeah. a we got pipes that are busted or what have you, you know. And or there's li- literally we got two feet of snow. Yeah. I'm like, that's fine. I'm coming in on my day off. I don't care. Sure. Or one of my coworkers calls me and says, hey, hey, I know it uh, turns out that my kid's sick and I'm not going to be here. So that's going to be two hands down. I would yeah. be there in a second. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing yeah. is I and that's why we have that's why we you know, it's 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 funny to talk about rules and stuff because we all don't want to be so rule heavy. Mm-hmm. But there are a reason that it's there. They're there for a reason. You know, yeah. it's like and, you know, so. Yep. Any rate, <laughs> thanks for letting me uh, vent a little. I just need to remind myself I'm going in on Christmas Day. I'm going in on Christmas Day. I'm going in on yeah. Christmas Day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. I, I am providing value and I am valuable and it's okay if somebody is not happy with me today. Mm-hmm. I don't – it's not the end of the world. Yeah, they'll get over it. Yeah. yeah it's like you it's said. So they're, just, they're just yeah. chapped right now because they have to yeah. be there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, it is hard living in that space where you know someone's not happy with you because of the decision you made for your benefit. And it's really hard living in that, it that is. space. Yeah, it is. Nobody wants to be that person that people don't like, but it's sometimes you have to be and well, you yeah. just have to sit in it. You have to, you have to well, work through it. We've talked in the past right. on here about how, yep. you know, sometimes like selfish is not a bad word sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and that, that's, you know, that's so important to, to make sure you remember that, you know, there are just times you have to be selfish or you should mm-hmm. be selfish or being selfish isn't going to be the end of the world in like in this situation, you know, things should be it's fine. Self care. Yeah. It's exactly. self care. So that's what it was. And, and with our topic tonight, I, I, you know, I'm going to be able to tie some stuff in with this story because it's about self care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Any. How about you guys? So, so, uh, well, (laughs) I I went through, uh, having some fun with, um, 
uh, anxiety yesterday because our power went out. Um, nice. you know, and when the power goes out in the winter, you know, you start having the, oh man, I hope the pipes don't freeze. Mm. Uh, I hope it doesn't get cold enough that the animals are affected. Now, if it was getting that kind of cold, we would have went, you know, over my sister's house or something like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just, these are things that run into my head, you know, pretty fast because, you know, it's just kind of how you're trained. You know, it's it's essentially a, a crisis, so you immediately go into risk assessment, and you know, uh, <laughs> so you know. Um, but uh, yeah, the power was out for you know six hours. But like I told you guys, but previously, I was like, you know, uh, we lucked out because the weather front that's coming through here has actually been kind of warming uh, warming us up, so it wasn't you know, ridiculously cold. It was cold, but it wasn't, It you know, we all had like, um, we all had coats, you know, and our shoes on and we were okay. You know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't like we were, you know, setting the house on fire just to keep warm or something. And, you know, again, if it got to that, we would have just went over to my sister's house. Um, but you know, it, it's so weird how that happens and not just that, but it also, whenever you, you lose power, you realize just how quickly, or you, you quickly realize just how heavily, um, electronics influence lives. <laughs> you <know? Yes. laughs> because, yes. you know, I'm looking at my phone, it's at like 40%, you know, um, you know, I, I'm sitting there going, man, if this is out for a while, I'm going to be bored out of my mind. You know, I can't, get on the computer. I can't, you know, there's all these things I can't do. And if I use my phone, I'm going to kill the battery because I don't have Wi-Fi. So it's going to be using data, which, you know, drains the phone, uh, quicker and stuff, you know? So it's like, I, you know, it's really funny how these things happen. And then you're just like, wow, you know, you kind of realize how much of, you're, you know, like I realize how much of my day, like, you know, there's no TV on, there's no, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it got turned back on. Luckily it got turned on by like 1030 last night. So even before it could get overnight kind of cold, really, you know, we had heat back on and, and everything's fine. So, you know, we didn't have any issues with the, uh, the pipes or anything, which is good. Cause again, it wasn't ridiculously cold. So. Um, yeah, you know, so it, it's just kind of weird, you know, um, also this week I found, found myself totally forgetting about a doctor's appointment, which is not like me. I'm usually really good about that kind of stuff. I completely Mm -hmm. blanked on it though. And it was yesterday. So, but it was before the power went out. So I can't even like blame it on that, you know, (laughs) like, oh, I was, yeah, I totally did. I, I, I didn't even register in my head until later because I have, you know, a little like business card from the doctor's office with the appointment written down and I saw it and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, oh I hate that <laughs> like I said, I'm usually I really good that. about it. So, yeah, I got to call and fix that. But, you know, no big deal. It, it's it, it, you know, it happens. I'm sure that they have it happen all the time to them. So, you know. Mm-hmm. It stinks, but what are you going to do? You know, <laughs> like I can't, I can't do anything about it. You know, it's completely over with. So yeah, that's, that's been about it though. It's, you know, been pretty, pretty quiet otherwise. So yeah. Well, that's good. Do you feeling good other than the, um, the, uh, situational anxieties? Yeah, I've been okay. It, you know, yeah, yeah. it's been kind of, you know, it's up and down, but not really much more than, normal so i haven't haven't really gone and done anything or uh had anything really kind of thrown at me this week so you know that's good yeah nice well i've been um still working on getting a house um we are going to underwriting right now and it has been very stressful and uh very difficult (laughs) to go through all of this stuff. Um, so I'm not, uh, I'm not sleeping all that well, which is not doing wonders for my anxieties and whatnot. And so I'm kind of, I'm, I need to take some time. We'll talk about a little bit about this, um, in the article, but I need to take some time for me and 
Uh, next week, I have almost a complete week off, so I'm going to get some me time in. I'm going to get my um, the house, you know, my house that I'm living in right now, get it in order, get everything done that I want to get done, and just really focus on feeling accomplished and feel getting myself in a good mental place. So yeah, that is good. my plan going forward to help get myself going again. That's this good. has just been, yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy six months for me. Very I've roller coaster. <laughs> I've been trying to do those little things like this last couple of weeks, and it's been just a huge benefit and not just for myself, but also for the people, you know, I yeah. share a, a dwelling with or, or even at work, you know, like I just, at the end of the day to report in on the one item that was a big deal that week, you know, like, Hey, just want to let you know, I did this, 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 and this, I got this done. You know, I did the dishes today before I left and, and, uh, took a bunch of stuff that was just sitting in a corner and just, you know, moved it back to where it's supposed to go and just did some little things. And, and then I get a text message from Sharon saying, Hey, thank you for doing this. And it's just like, okay, yes, that's, that's what those little things are good for is not only does it make me feel like I'm, I'm, you know, not, I'm taking care of business and keeping myself, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, those are my little, those have been my little victories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny how it's, it's, it shouldn't be a, like, I've always laugh about it. Like you shouldn't get a reward for what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But, but when you're but that's how we're that hardwired, to, that's that, it. That's how our brains are that's hardwired. It. When we do that's something, it. we feel good, you know, and it makes sense. That's, you know, that it, you're going to keep doing that because you get addicted to that good feeling, you know, because <laughs> I I'm apt to slip in the other direction. It's just a fact. Yeah. I mean, I can be just so horrible with this stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm trying to be very encouraging, Jen. <laughs> you are because I love it. Very encouraging. Now, in, it's you get rewarded for the effort you put forth. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you put, if it's if it's hard for you to do something, you should get more reward. You know, even if it's the same thing. You know, if someone despises doing dishes and they do dishes versus someone who is fine with it or likes doing dishes and they do dishes. The person who despises it, that puts forth that much more effort to get them done should get a little bit more of a kudos in my book because they put forth so much more efforts. And it's also like not being selfish. Like for me, that's mm -hmm. part of being mindful. Like mindfulness comes out of, of not just not just doing something for myself, but doing you know that I feel good, but also so that that the people around me don't feel bad. I like that idea of being mindful. That means I don't create karma. Yeah. You know, like like yeah. uh, somebody comes home and they see the dishes are done and they're, they're not piled up in the sink. I just prevented some karma right there. That's mindfulness. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's literally what it is. <laughs> just like just like that idea of like you know say you know speaking properly being mindful with my words being and then mindful with my thoughts and mindful with my actions mm-hmm. yes and it works <laughs> yeah and you know it just does yeah. i mean and it does benefit you you know too because you know ha- having clean dishes is good for you also so you know it, it absolutely absolutely yeah. it, it is, is it is essentially self-care as well as yeah. you know because you know, plus, and, like you and, said, by preventing that karma, you know, there can't be there's by just going ahead and doing it. There's no chance of it turning into a fight later over who's going to do exactly. the dishes or why aren't you doing the dishes? I did yeah. this, or you know, it can't have any of that garbage. It's just all eliminated right. because you just did it. You know? Yeah, and it's funny how because it's like, and it had to do with like planning. It's it's a it's the opposite of all those things we already talked about. It's like I planned today. I planned on leaving at a certain time, and I didn't take on more than I could do before I left. So I was able to do some other things. Mm-hmm. You know, I tend to be one of those types of people that, that tries to take on too many things at the last minute, and then I'm late. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I get the repercussions of being late. And those are my choices. I don't like them, 
but those were that's part of my alcoholic thinking to be to be honest that's the stuff you know then i get into a fight and i wonder why i got into a fight with whoever it is it doesn't matter who it is mm. because i got selfish and i decided that these things were more important and i needed to get them done and it's when i finally step up and i you know step back from my life a little bit and i look at it and i go oh yeah those were all my choices <laughs> You know, the, I made those choices, so mm-hmm. maybe maybe we should try doing things a little differently. <laughs> right. All about choices. There's <laughs> not a situation where you do not have a choice that you can make. Every situation you can choose. You don't like your choices. You know, some That's of them true. are really bad choices, and you don't want to take them, but you always have choices. Yeah. It's it's really when I came to that that was really an aha moment in my life and kind of a turning point when I realized in this, it's like taking back your power and stuff you know I when I realized that everything that I do I'm not powerless to I make active choices as long as I'm making active choices then I'm moving forward in my life and I am taking control of my life and I'm not and things go better for me when I do this. That's yeah. the difference between acting and reacting. Yeah. If your life is nothing but a set of reactions, it uh, might be time to start kind of reevaluating how, yeah. how you're doing life. You know, mm-hmm. I've, I'm realizing that the more I act, it just goes smoother. <laughs> it really does. It, it does. goes, it, it, things go smoother. It's a lot easier. A lot easier. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like playing kickball and you're standing there. You know, you could either kick the ball and something will happen and then you can react, you know, or you can stand there and look at the ball and go, why isn't the ball flying out into the field? (laughs) You know, and it's like, (laughs) you know, it's like. (laughs) Why am I not having any fun playing this game? I don't get it. I don't understand why it didn't just go. It's like, well, you kind of have to do something to. Yeah. So it's like you can't mm-hmm. you can't stand still and move forward. It's just you know, unless you're on an escalator, <laughs> right? And then if you're on an escalator, you're going where someone else wants you to go. You're not yeah. going necessarily where you want. Right? To go. I was there. Those people that movers like the airport. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, if you want to go where you want to go, then you need to take your steps yeah. and not let someone drag you. Yep. Yeah. But well, so since we're coming up on the holiday season. Um, I personally have five social events within a matter of three days and actually, yeah, two, two, yeah, five. <laughs> I lost track that of my days. That scares me I, to death. Me too. Just <laughs> yeah. you, you describing just that to us. Just saying that? Yeah. Fear. Yep. Pure fear. Oh, I, I just dread for me mm. until it's all over. Yeah. Oh, you guys are both becoming a little robotic on my end. Oh, okay. Can you hear us all right now? No. That's weird. I can hear you fine. I can hear Heno yeah, perfect. You're great. So. Oh, there we go. Okay. You guys are back. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Well, technical difficulty, folks. Yeah, a Sorry bit. about that. Yeah. See, Skype was fearful of five events in two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three days five or whatever events. it is. Five no thanks. In three days. So that being said, and I am a bit of an extrovert, which is, is different considering I kind of fluctuate between extrovert, extrovert and introvert because my personality tends to lean towards the extrovert, but because of the bipolar and my anxieties, it makes me act more like an introvert. If that makes any sense. It's really funny. I'd almost argue that because of your bipolar, it really mm-hmm. – this time of year is a perfect example of of the bipolar part because you're either – like yeah. you said, the extrovert, which is essentially kind of the manic because I've been around you enough that you're go, 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 go until it's over. And then once it's over, you're very much like – completely pull away blankets over your head shut the doors you know like you know you kind of go the opposite way you know Mm. so exactly i mean it's it's just it's yeah things are just it's going to be interesting to see how how this whole plays out but Hmm. uh, 
um, this great article, Brian, that you found on introvertdeer.com. And yes, there is such a thing as an introvert hangover. Now, we've talked about extrovert hangovers, and we've talked about emotional hangovers before. So, But this is a little bit different, and I think it has some really good um, tips and ideas behind it um, that we may have touched on before, but I think it's very important to bring up again and to discuss. Right, really quick, so, before you get into that, before you jump into that, let me ask really quick, because you just said you know, that you, you identify as more extrovert. What about you, Heno? More intro I'm or extrovert? E- I'm an egomaniac with an inferiority complex. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know who you are. <laughs> you know who I am. I, nice. no, I, 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 I mean, my mom said I was born on a stage. I know how to put on the face. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. I I happen to be someone that can really isolate and be a homebody most of the time, but mm-hmm. I know how to put on the face and do the thing. You Fair know. enough. And I like attention, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I'm the same boat. I'm the same person. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because like I like attention. Like I like making you know entertaining people. Like I like making them laugh and all that kind of stuff. But I have to warm into it, so I, I definitely know I, I am way more yeah. in, introvert than extrovert. Eventually, I get to extrovert yes. with people, but I it takes yeah. usually it takes a little while for me to get to that point. That's why I like this article so much, is because you're never going to see me as the guy that's stuck in the corner not talking to anybody, right? Whereas that that's totally me. That there isn't a, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm never going to be that guy, but I will have the point where the turkey timer goes off and I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> done. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because, yeah, it, it almost happens and you don't, it'll catch you off guard because you're, you're going along, you're going along, you're going along and all of a sudden you stop, you're just like, no, your body and your mind and everything just like, no, I'm done. This is it. You reach your limit, <laughs> you know, and yep. it just, you know, it'll stop you dead, dead in your tracks, dead cold in your tracks. And you're like, okay, I need to go. Especially if you're you know, not I in your to- comfort zone. You know, if you're already, yes. if you're already stretching yourself to begin with, and I would mm-hmm. say like, you know, that, that fourth event you get to at that point, you're stretching yourself, oh, <laughs> you know, you're, man. you're working those boundaries to their limits. That's tough, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we've all got different limits. Like I, you know, I, I used to have what three across three or four days, and that mm-hmm. was that was too much for me. Most of the time, I would only end up going to two, you know, and I was done. That, mm-hmm. that was it. And if I did do the three, I was really done. You know, like like gonna take me the whole next week to recover. Done. You know, so it, yeah. it's very interesting how. Some people can't just cannot seem to do that, you know. And I'll say alcohol is not a help for me. Like I am almost I'm better off when I have this many social events. I'm almost better off not having any alcohol to drink than to do the opposite because I just it, it almost like speeds up the process process to I'm done when I have alcohol. Yeah. Well, it makes so. you unpre- it makes you, it makes us unpredictable. I know that's what it did for me. It made me unpredictable. Yes. Whereas if I don't drink, I can I can make the agreement, you know, like okay, we're going to go to this party and we're going to be here for whatever an hour and a half, 2 hours, and then at that point can we leave? Okay, you know, whoever I'm with. Okay, mm-hmm. we make that agreement. And I starts drinking and maybe it's like, woohoo, party, let's go all night long. Yeah. Or I piss somebody off in an hour. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. And it's that unpredictable quality. Like I don't like uh oh, somebody says something or whatever and I get overly emotional all of a sudden or you know, whatever it is. But it's mm-hmm. that unpredictable nature. And it's, it, it, again, it's like if if you're the type of person that is not comfortable in large groups or around a bunch of strangers, probably going in with both your hands in front of you for the fight is better than one hand tied behind your back. And that's how I consider drinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're right. 
Because I, I'm the you just yeah. you just described it perfectly yeah. for me. Because being an introvert, I'm more likely to go toward alcohol to loosen me up to get me yeah. to extrovert essentially. Yeah. But what I, what'll happen is like you were saying is if you have that agreement, I, I I'm not generally going to make anyone mad, but I'm more likely to be like I don't want to go yet, you know. And then later, once the booze is worn off, then that all sinks back in, and it's like I'm done. You know, like Jen said, you know, you, you hit that, that point faster because you essentially didn't realize how fast you were going. And then when it catches up to you, you know, you're just like, done. I, I, I'm not going tomorrow or I'm not going to, you know, so I, I definitely caution people to be careful of, you know, of that. Absolutely. And make sure you have a good conversation with the people you're with yeah. because you'll make an agreement that you say you know I'm only gonna you know we're just gonna go for a couple hours it'll be fine you know we'll have a good time then we'll leave okay great so you get all set for a couple hours and stuff like that you get to the point where you're done and you go to the person you came with and you're like I'm done. I, I just need to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Like, oh, we're, we're having this conversation or we're playing this game and we can, you know, wait a little bit longer and blah, 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 blah. It makes things so much harder on that person who is done, who yeah. needs to go. Yeah. And you're not listening to them and you're not paying yeah. attention to what they need. So you don't, being clear in the expectations and holding up to your end of the bargain is very important. The fact that you said what they need is the part I'd like to really stress there. Because there's some times where people just want mm-hmm. to leave and there's some times when you need to leave. You know? Yes. And, and there is a difference that, you know, like, you know, if pushed past that point, it starts, you know, it, it can really kind of make the person turn on you essentially too, you know? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. and, and this is go ahead. If I, I have a great example of this and, and this is a little bit, Heno pats himself on the back, but it's, 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 it's where I, my life changed is I used to have a, I used to have a friend that had a very difficult time with, with night, you know, night vision. It's something in their family. And, and I would drink and I just, I wouldn't even be thinking of anybody else. And she would bring up to me that, Hey, I'm having a hard time seeing or whatever it is. I can't see the ground or this or that. So she's having trouble seeing and she can't see the ground. Just that, um, uh, it's, uh, that was that macro degenerate degeneration. Yeah. You know, it runs in their fa- yes. family. And so yeah, really bad peripheral vision and all that kind of stuff. And, and I just was so into what the fun I was having that I wasn't even, I was wasn't listening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't listening to the fact that somebody needed help. And it didn't matter if we had the conversation beforehand, like, Hey, you know, if I, and, and that's part of, you know, the, like, Hey, if, if you see this, if, or if I'm having a hard time with this, can you help me? And mm-hmm. I was ab- absolutely oblivious to this. And then, you know, fast forward now a few, a couple years ago was the first time we had like the 30 some odd people at my uh, sister and brother-in-law's house for Thanksgiving. And Sharon and I were there and we were, uh, uh, the space below is being rented out. We couldn't go to my parents' house because of the dogs. And so we were going to be in like their living room. Well, there were so many people there. Sharon wasn't feeling good. And this has to, you know, like that difference between, you know, the emotional hangover is like that idea of like, you know, we were, we're all on all night long and then the next day we have to deal with it right Mm -hmm. and and what we're talking about here with this this introverts hangover it's like we have a limited amount of of juice and when Mm -hmm. the juice starts to go the symptoms kick in right and so sharon's juice was gone and it was like she was noticing all the people she was feeling the anxiety the whole idea of like somehow being there and now you know what putting out a, a fold out bed in the middle of the floor in this place was just, it was like, and, and she just looked at me and I saw it in her face right away. And it's like, I can't do this. I need to go somewhere right now. And I'm yeah. like, okay, agreed. I have no problem. Let's go get a hotel room. Give me a minute. Just, just, you know, give me at least a minute to go talk to Elise and my, you know, my brother-in-law and say, Hey, we're leaving, you know, no offense, but it's like the juice was done yep. and it was time to go somewhere. And she got outside and she made the phone call and I went and I just apologized. I said, you know, it's, it's that time. And 
it felt so good to be responsive to the other person, you know, and it just reminded me of like, wow, this is, this is, this is how you're supposed to do it. You know, like how I used to do it was not right. And that's why I say with, if somebody, and you brought up that idea of need, Brian, and I think this is crucial that if, if you are a person that has a limited, um, if, if your tendency is to be introverted, but you're willing to go to the party and be an extrovert for a couple of hours and you know that your fuse is only so long, let your partner know that, hey, you know, keep an eye out for me. This might happen. And if it does, you know, if I'd appreciate it if you just, you know, be aware of it and and help me out with this. Yeah. Because what happens is, is like in this article article it talks about it where it's like all of a sudden you know it's like the the noise level the lights you feel ringing in the ears it's all those signs of anxiety that the the world closing in on you and if you don't have a way to escape then you need help to get out of there yeah it's crucial it is and you that's the thing is you you just never know um you know, sometimes you, you can tell that you're about at that point and other times, sometimes you don't quite realize it, you know, and, uh, it just you know, sneaks up on you. yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I thought it was interesting. She mentions in this article about how, you know, being at a party, how, you know, she's looking for somewhere like a safe place, basically a quiet zone, essentially. And when she found mm-hmm. one, someone else, you know, kind of was already, in there. was already there. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, I've done that to where, you know, and it could be just as simple as you'll be at a party and somebody will go outside to have a cigarette or something. And you walk out yep. there and they'll be like, man, it is crazy in there. Or I just had to get outside for a minute. And, I'm, and then I'll be like, yeah, me too. It's like, you know, and it's like, and I'll be, you know, like, well, at least you have the cigarette as an excuse. You know, you can say that and no one thinks a thing of it. And I remember saying that once to a friend and I was just like, thinking about it and it's like that's horrible the fact that they can walk outside be, and have a cigarette and everyone's just like oh yeah they're going to have a cigarette no big deal but if you're like hey this is too much i have to go outside for a minute people will be like oh come on what do you you know you like you get you know you get uh the business Shamed. from some people yeah yeah especially when there's drinking involved oh, too sure, it's that yeah. old thing of like oh come on you know you know that yeah, kind of yeah yeah it really it's 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 i'm i'm the more i'm more I'm aware of it, the more I realize that mental health is just not accepted in our society. Yeah. Mental health issues. It's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can have all, all the addictions in the world and we'll, you know, we'll help you, but mental health, oh, you know, just man up or get up out of bed or whatever it is. And it, it's, it's, it's re- becoming, it's, be- it's better, mm-hmm. but yeah, yes. it's definitely not where it needs to be. Yeah. And then, um, so We've mentioned a few things in the in the from the article. I'm going to skip the intro um, story, which is very good. I highly recommend you guys read this article. It's uh, from Introvert Deer. Uh, yes, there is such a thing as an introvert hangover. And uh, what is an introvert hangover? If you're an introvert, you already know what I'm talking about because you've likely experienced it more than once. But if you aren't or you need help explaining the idea to extroverted friends, here's mm-hmm. an attempt at description. Introverts have a more limited ra- ration of energy available for socializing compared to our more extroverted counterparts. When we push past those reserves, we hit a tipping point where we go from being fine to definitely not okay. An introvert hangover is simply put a withdrawal into oneself run on by overstimulation. So I thought that was a great it's description. It's a great description. Yep. You know, there was a there was a study when I was doing uh, the podcast with Angela, we had found a study that was about that we have limited willpower. And and this had to do with eating, about how the fact that by the time we get to the end of the day, that our willpower is gone and we grab the quart of ice cream and we eat the whole well, darn thing. Do you know what I think is a, is great proof of that essentially is if you look at how diets like the slim fast diet work, you know, it's have a shake, a snack, a shake, a snack, and then kind of, it says sensible dinner, but I think the reason they give you the dinner in a way is partially because they know people are like you were saying, your willpower is lower. And it's like, I don't really want to shake. I really want, I really want this, you know, and I think they yeah. know people are going to give into that more, you know. Yeah, and it was it once I once I read that it, it it brought so much in. Like for me this week, it's been 
it, yeah, we're working hard, but there's a lot of mental fatigue involved. And mm-hmm. so when I, when, even though at the end of the day, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, going to go to the gym. I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym. <laughs> you know, I my that, that, that will is gone, but I'm like, I know I'm going to feel better if I go to the gym. All right. So I went to the gym, I got on the treadmill. I lasted about 20 minutes and I started getting tunnel vision. And I'm like, I've eaten plenty of food. It's not like I'm, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not in the place. And I literally had everything turn into a white dot in front of my face. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with the treadmill now. I've done, yeah. my, you know, yeah. I did it. I feel good. I'm calling myself a winner and I'm going home. Right. <laughs> and the next day, and the next day when I got done, I went, no, this time I'm going home and I'm lying on the couch and I'm watching bad television. <laughs> it's that, that recognition of like, you know, we only have so much. Yeah. And, and, and if we try to push past it, you know, things happen. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly. so true. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really... what causes the hangover is when you're pushed past your, and I think this is where she mentions it, but, uh, mm-hmm. you're pushed, pushed past your, your limit. You start working as she refers to it as you're in a deficit at that point. And that's where yes. that, that's where the hangover is, is because you've gone into the negative and now you have to rebound from that, but bef- just to get back to even, you know, yeah. let alone good, but just to get back to even, you've got to come back and then you can worry about getting, you know, back to a hundred percent. Exactly. So an introvert hangover is a pretty terrible thing to experience. It starts with an actual physical reaction to overstimulation. Your ears might ring, your eyes start to blur, and you feel like you're going to hyperventilate. Maybe your palms sweat, and then your mind feels like it kind of shuts down, building barriers around itself as if you had been driving on a wide open road, and now you're suddenly driving in a narrow tunnel. All you want is to be home alone where it's quiet. And if you can't get solitude when you need it, That's when your inner voice starts. It can tell you terrible things about yourself, that you're no fun, Mm -hmm. that you're terrible at socializing, that everyone thinks you're a bore or a snob. You look at the people around you who are laughing and having fun, and then you wonder why you aren't. Why can't you just smile and join in? Why can't you just be normal? Now, these feelings are only compounded when other people notice that you've stopped communicating and want to find out why. Why are you so quiet, they ask, (laughs) meaning, well, are you upset? Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. One party you wants to answer them, the other party you shouting just to snap out of it. But the, those parts more often lose out against the part of you that wants to retreat and be left alone. So you end up glowering at people or snapping at them and walking away. The whole time listening to your inner voice telling you what an awful person everyone thinks you are. The way you feel seems irrational and you know it. But that doesn't mean that you can suddenly stop feeling that way. Wow. That's so powerful that I, that the idea of like, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong, wrong, it's good timing or bad timing. This is how I feel right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And to have anybody dismiss that or minimize it or, or, you know, that, that kind of, and that's where we, we, that type where you have your wingman, your partner, yeah. whoever it is, whether it's your, you know, just a buddy, whether it's your significant other or whoever it is. That idea, like, hey, I can feel like this. Yeah. When I start to feel like this, I, I, you know, I'd appreciate it if you listen. You know, yeah. Well, yeah, a gr- it's really a, important. A really great example of this was, you know, and if you go back our episode uh, to our episode forty four uh, was about uh, emotional hangovers. Um, and we talked about this, and we <laughs> talked about this actually, yeah, um, because yeah. like when we were in Chicago. Heno saw me, we went into a bar that was really crowded and it was after we had been traveling and all this. And basically the travel sapped my energy, like my, Mm -hmm. you know, my ability to deal with reserves. My reserves were gone. And then we went to a bar and it was busy. There was just so much stimulation from the noise and it was crowded. And Heno even makes the comment, you know, that he could see in me that I just wasn't right. You know, that it was, I was done. And, you know, we went to another place that had a lot less people. It was a lot quieter and I was, I was good. It took me, you know, a little bit, but I was fine. And, you know, it's, it's, that's so important to have people around you that can see that, you know, and are Mm -hmm. willing and are willing to help, you know, not just Heno, you know, Tony and Jeannie and T were all great too. It wasn't, you know, like Mm -hmm. as soon as I was like, I I can't do this, everybody was like, let's go. You know, there was no... It, you know, there was no, no anything about mm-hmm. it. Yep. So 
it, you know, it, it, because it really is, it's amazing how the best way I can do it is if you don't have this, the only thing I can think of to really describe this is if you're really tired and you want to go home and yeah. somebody just won't like whoever you're with just doesn't want to leave. You start getting cranky. You're mad because mm-hmm. you just want to go home. You want to get into bed where you, you know, like that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really similar to that as far as that part of it. I mean, without the, uh, you know, the hyperventilating or the, the other stuff, but yeah. you know, the negative, uh, negative thoughts. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think this, the, the hardest example of this would be the old, uh, Oh, the boss has invited us over for a party. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it was for new years or the holidays or whatever, the boss has invited us over for a party and I need to impress the boss. But you know, my partner is just like, just, tired done they they don't have anything left and now you have to leave and all and that that must be so difficult because when you're amongst friends it's a lot easier to say hey you know i've had a long day i i gotta bow out early friends understand that but when it's not i mean that that's just it must be just so hard especially for in relationships yeah Mm -hmm. you know and don't blame the other person you brought up something that that kind of struck a chord with me try very hard not to blame the person that is having the introvert attack. Yeah. Because it's so easy to go, Oh, she's not feeling right. So we've got to go. Yeah. You know, that does not. Mm, a situation great point. At all. Now, yeah. it, it, it's it funny. It makes things like numerously worse. It's, it's one of the, the positions where a physically not feeling well and mentally not feeling well, where there is kind of a divide. Because if someone's yes. not feeling physically well, you know, unless it's something embarrassing or something, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it that, is. That's okay. Yeah. Then it's fairly acceptable to say that, you know, like if someone gets a migraine, yeah. you could be like, hey, you know, Brian's got a migraine. We got to go. And everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, and whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you go up, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, uh, little, little Mr. Hermit there just won't, you know, come out of his shell. So we got to leave. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm being really abrasive about it, but you know, it's, um, exactly. Yeah. You just got to be very careful. Don't lay a guilt trip basically is what you're doing. You're laying a guilt yeah. trip on the person that needs to leave right? for making you leave. And yeah. that's not a fair place to be. Yeah. Cause they generally don't. I mean, I've plenty, mm-hmm. been plenty of places where I'm past my point. And I wouldn't say something because I could see that other people were having so much fun. Good time, yeah. And yeah. that also stinks, but, you know, it's it's why the communication stuff is so important, you know? Yeah. Because there are some times where, you know, you can kind of like, well, you know, I, I, can, I can deal with this. And there's other times where it is really like, no, I have to go now. Like, you know, I've already yeah. tried moving myself away from the – stimulation i've i've already gone through breathing stuff i've you know done all the things i can do that and they're not working you know and it, it's unfortunate it happens sometime you know yeah do you do you guys ever like you know like in this example in this article it talks about you know, she goes into another room and and uh you know gets this opportunity to just kind of you know calm down and and get this moment like for me I don't ever get back to the point where I can now join the party again. You know, to me, it's like if I, if I'm at a point where I need to escape for a little while, that's just so I don't lose my cookies. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm going to suddenly rebound and rejoin. No, that usually means it's time to go. I, uh, how about you guys? Cause I I just don't. It's like if, if your scale was like one to 10 and your anxiety gets pushed to like 14, Going off and whatever might bring me back down to 10, but it certainly won't bring me to like five or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, it'll get me through for another, you know, I might be able to to stretch it out. Like if I take five, 10 minutes out, uh, basically what happens with me is I almost have to do five, 10 minutes of silence. Then I can join the party for 15, 20 minutes. Then I have another five, 10 minutes of silence. Then I can, you know, so it's almost like I can, I can kind of ration 
very equivalent to doing circles and making turning corners when you have very, very little gas in the tank. So you're kind of getting that little splash of gas going up, <laughs> you know, to keep the car running. Very similar to that uh, type of a thing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of funny. I just, I just realized. So, so my dad's a super introvert. Always has been like if 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 when I was a kid, if I brought you know my friends over to the house, boom, he's upstairs. Yeah. He'd hide. Mm-hmm. That's just who he was. He's mm-hmm. always been that way. And I just realized that. So when I when I've had enough at a party, I tend to like go wander off and like hang out with one of the kids and watch what they're doing. Yeah. Oh, that's a great way of getting some quiet time without removing yourself completely from the party. And I just realized that's what my dad does. Yeah. Ah. Like, like I when I always at when at Thanksgiving I'd look over and he's sitting on the couch with one of the kids and the kid's got the iPad and he's and he's he's just watching what the kid is doing, you know, kind of making some comments and participating. But I never realized that he was doing the exact same thing yeah. that I do, which is just I just need to go somewhere and do something simple. There's there and and there's no feeling of um, expectation. Like you don't when you walk up to a kid, you don't go, oh, geez, I have to make small talk, you know, generally like if it's an adult, it's, you're right. you know, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. Small talk, small talk. And you're just like, oh, you're right. You just sit down, you watch the kid play video games and that's that. And yeah. chances are the kid's going to tell you exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or even if you just make it so easy. Yeah. Or even if you do talk to the kid, it's just there's something about mm-hmm. it that's less stressful than talking to an adult. You know, it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what that is, but yeah, you know, that, that actually, I I wanted to go back to that or sorry, go ahead. If you have something. No, I was just going to say, this is, this is your tool for the week. Find a kid and ask him to show you his toys. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. What happened to Um, Brian? careful about the, about when and where you find a child and ask him to show you the toy. (laughs) Toys. Yeah. Just be careful. You're at, you're at a party. It's like, Hey, what happened to Brian? It's like, I think he's playing dinosaurs in the other room. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I wanted to point out some dinobots. I mean, yeah. Right. Um, Right there was actually Heno kind of touched on this with the like bringing uh friends home and his dad retreating there that's actually something I think a lot of people don't understand also is like if you're going to a party and you're expecting x amount of people and you get there and there's say twenty more than that or five more or whatever that immediately will put a lot of introverts that will immediately strap, sap some of their strength. Because they will, you know, now it's, oh man, I thought it was just going to be like the four of us. Now it's 10 of us, you know, and in your mm-hmm. head, it's, it's so much more conversation or it's, I haven't ever met these people. So, you know, and it, it's amazing how those can, those things will do it too. What you'll probably notice is if you have introverted friends, you'll probably notice that when they go to do things with you, they'll ask who's going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you may think that it's a, well, they may make their decision based on who is or isn't going. And it, that may be true, but it's probably more just so that you have that mental, uh, you can prepare yourself mentally for how many people you're going to have to interact with on the night. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, that's true. Um, Shoot, where is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just looking to see if there's any more. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out because she makes that comment in the article. And I thought that was a really good point. So Yes. Well, that's what the only way to cure an introvert hangover is solitude. And this is not, or this is what we as introverts would most like for our extroverted friends to understand. Yeah. It's not that we don't want to be around you. It's not that we're upset. It's not that anything is particularly wrong. It's just that we need to be alone. We need some time up in our heads with our thoughts. We need time just to breathe and just to be. We may not need much time sometimes it's just half an hour or an hour can do wonders in fact we may not even need to be technically alone as my story above us illustrates if we can put on our headphones and sit away from the crowd undisturbed for a bit that can be just as helpful as being alone in the years we've been together my husband has continued to take me to holiday events with his gregarious if slightly overwhelming family obviously i knew that was part of the deal by the time i married him but that's also why I make my own clear demands for personal time and space. Because as introverts, if we want to avoid a hangover, moderation is always the key. 
Yeah, you know, I, I remember like the best example of this I can think of is um, after my dad died, you know, through the mm. day it was constant, you know, because for the showing – or whatever, it was just constantly meeting people, meeting people, meeting people, you know, greeting Mm -hmm. them, having them talk to me, you know, all this, like, and I, at different times had to just, you know, go into the lounge or I'd go into the bathroom or whatever. And, um, and by the time we left, I, you know, then it was, you know, somebody was like, Hey, let's all go to dinner. And it's like, yeah, well, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to eat. So you go. And then I'd get home and it was just that, quiet of the house just walking in even though you know there were other people in the house also it was just that there was no more like nobody was coming over nobody was going to come up to me and you know talk to me I, I was done with the small talk I was done with all the interaction and it was just like ah uh, you know like I'm I'm alone I, or I'm home I'm in my safe spot I'm you know it, it was it's amazing how much that meant to me. Whereas the, I know there are a lot of people who will talk about after someone dies, it'll be like, you know, the, the worst part was when I was alone for me, I was, I, it, it was almost the best time because I finally mm. could start recharging my battery a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was such an overstimulation that it took a while to overcome that, you know? Mm-hmm. So Jen, what's your strategy going to be for these, uh, five events. Yeah, good question. Well, I have, um, thankfully, I mean, it's, it's all family events. And I'm very open, obviously, with, with my bipolar and expectations. And I've, um, I've set expectations of for, for my, uh, I set their expectations of me already, um, throughout the years. So they know what to, what to expect from me they know that they're going to see me and be very social and stuff but they also know that i'm if i disappear for a few minutes not to worry about me or anything like that because that's just me taking a few breaths breaths and then turning around and and then coming back in and, and socializing um i also have my um my key people where every party is going to have has at least one or two people that are my safe zone so I can um, I can seek them out. They understand me better than most people do. So I can kind of cling to them a little bit and just kind of talk with them. And and um, and it's much more comfortable. It's less of a forced small ch- small talk. It's more of a actual conversations because we are more social throughout the entire year together. So that's helpful. And the other thing is. Um, I have signals set up with my husband, so he knows certain where I'm at with certain things. As he sees me become more and more, he calls it clingy. I call it tactile. <laughs> As I become more gotcha, tactile, gotcha. Yeah. then he starts to he gets the idea that it's time because I'm yeah. I'm needing that that contact. I, I mm-hmm. you know to kind of. Uh, ground you, ground yeah. you. Yes, yep. thank you. Yep. Ground me is exactly it. So. So I'll like loop my arm with his or I'll come up and, you know, put my head on his shoulder or he'll be sitting down. I'll rub his back when he starts feeling me touching him a lot more. It's like all of a sudden that those are his triggers that it's time for us to start wrapping up because I'm getting real emotional and real um, mixed up that I kind of need to decompress and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, so I, I do have some some things, but I think a big, big, big step that I would recommend to everyone is if you are hanging out with people who are trusted friends, bring them in on things, let them know. You know, I told um, my husband's family, his two cousins and his mom knew, and I'm sure his aunts know as well, but I even told them for the wedding and stuff. I said, just so you guys know, because it's so, much of everything. It's so overwhelming. If I disappear for a little bit, don't worry. I I, I'm fine. I just need to get my head together. I just need to have my own private time to just get my thoughts together and just relax for a few minutes. 
So they already knew that going into things so that it didn't become a scene. It doesn't bring up questions. I didn't have to deal with everyone going, oh, are you okay? Is everything all right? And all that well-meaning stuff. Yeah. But still the attention and the the extra noise that, that nobody really wants. Um, I didn't have to worry about that. And going forward, I don't have to really worry about that, which is nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that, what do you guys think? Got anything else you would like to add? No, there's nothing I can really think of. You, Hannah? Yeah, other than, you know, the the uh, you, you brought up that part where when when you're the person that's down and out or, or separating yourself, everyone wants to come up and and uh, try to try to bring you back, bring yeah. you back yeah. in. Yeah. Right. And that also goes, I just, you know, as far as drinking goes. If if you're the person that's acting like a bump on a log, what first person the first thing they're gonna do is say, Hey, do you you know, do you need a drink? Do you want this? You know, blah 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 this. And and if you're if you're the designated driver for the night, you know, it's like we do have a choice about how everyone perceives us at an event, and there's subtle things that we can do to stay like we're connected, even though we might not be comfortable because we don't have, you know, whatever, a cocktail in our hand or we're out of our element as far as being an introvert. And it's the one thing I try to that that I learned early on in sobriety is that if I try to at least engage and and participate a little bit, I don't have to be, you know, super gregarious or involved. But if I just try to participate a little bit, I'm less likely to get that pressure from other people going, well, aren't you having a good time? Yeah. So, so that's my suggestion for the for if you got parties coming up for people is is like you know even if you're not into it, fake it a little bit and yeah. it'll probably go a long way. <laughs> it does. You're right. right. And and again, as Jen said, I can't stress enough how important communication is. You know, yeah. whoever you're going to the party with, you know, tell them. Uh, if you're going by yourself, you know, let someone know. You know, hey, if I di- like Jen said, you know, hey, if I disappear. I'm good. I just needed a minute to, you know, to catch, you know, catch my breath basically. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. So, uh, you know, again, because the rules change, you know, if, if, if you're playing by different rules, you get, you know, let your friends and whatever know, you know, so that they, they understand. Also that kind of heads off people constantly coming up to you and asking if you're okay. If, if people know, you know, like, oh, hey, yeah, Brian, Brian's outside. He just needs a minute. And everybody, oh, okay. And they'll go back to what yeah. they're doing, you know, so it versus otherwise you'll have a parade of people coming out into what you've then made into your temporary safe space, you know, yes. <laughs> Con- constantly violating that. And you're just like, leave me alone, you know? <laughs> so, yes, exactly. Yeah. Well meaning, very well meaning yes. and very nice. Thoughts and feelings, you know, everyone wants to be nice, but yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah, it just, they don't understand that it's the opposite of nice what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, with that being said, I forgot what I normally say. Oh, if you would <laughs> like to continue the conversation, it's been too long, folks. If you would like to continue the conversation, <laughs> Then you can reach out to us. You can write us an email at the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. You can reach us on our website at the crazy life podcast dot weebly dot com. And you can reach out to me on Twitter at Jen's crazy life with that's Jen with a G. And, um, you can just, I don't post very often, but if you send me a friend request, you can private message me or feel free to shoot out any sort of message to me. I do see them. I do check it often. Just so you know, I don't make a big presence on Twitter, but I do see what you post. So thank you very much for all of that wonderful love and all that good stuff. Brian. Nope. Actually, we're going to go to Hanno. Hanno. <laughs> How about you? I'm- Got, I've got the short list. You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Find me on Facebook at Heno Heiter or message us at the uh, Crazy Life Facebook page. Thanks. Right. And, and Brian? The Crazy Life Facebook page can be found at facebook.com slash group slash Crazy Life Podcast. Uh, there's some 
good resources uh, that we put on there for, um, you know, different hotlines if you're in crisis mode or uh, if you need help finding a, uh, a therapist or whatever. There's, you know, some stuff over there that you can look at or if you need anything like that, contact us and we can uh, hook you up with that. Um, you can also find the show on Twitter uh, to see when new episodes go up or whatever at uh, the Crazy Life Pod. You can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, the other podcast that I'm on, which is Salty Language, and it's not safe for work, uh, it can be found at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage.com. Um, I lost my place. <laughs> we're, we're just crushing it tonight. Um, oh, that's where I was. Uh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at TangentBoundNetwork.com. Um, if you listen to us on iTunes, uh, please leave us a, a review. Um, you know, uh, that helps us get, uh, become more visible to people who are, you know, looking through the categories for new podcasts to listen to. Um, and basically same thing if you, you know, however it is you listen to us, if there's a like, share, uh, whatever button like that, you know, uh, use that please. And, uh, it helps us out a little bit too. And we appreciate it. Um, and then, you know, remind everybody that we're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. Um, we're just three people sharing our experiences and the show should not be seen as a replacement for therapy, um, or, or help of any kind, you know, like that. If you need help, please seek out a professional and, uh, get a, a game plan going there. Um, and then if you're feeling suicidal, um, no matter what step in the stage it is, whether it's planning or, you know, you're, you're just thinking of how, of how you would write a suicide note, anything like that along the way, uh, reach out to somebody, whether it's your doctor, a friend, uh, you know, something to make sure somebody else knows. Um, so you can, you know, look for some help or at least talk it through with somebody and please don't act on it. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is again, you know, it's not just especially this time of year because I, I kind of want to dispel that, but you know, uh, we talked about compassion last week and, uh, you know, reach out to somebody is, you know, like if you haven't talked to somebody in a while, reach out or post something that just tells people, Hey, if you need somebody, I'm there for you. Um, you know, on, on your online stuff, just let people know, you know, that you are there and willing to, to be, you know, part of their support system. And, uh, because you just never know when just reaching out to somebody you haven't reached out to in a long time, you don't know what kind of day, week, month, whatever they're having, you know, you might, you might save their life. So, you know, yeah, just, yeah, just Mm -hmm. make sure you reach out. My favorite way of doing that if, is if you want an icebreaker is I'll shoot someone I haven't talked to in a while. It's like just thinking of you, hoping, feeling, you know, hope. Hope everything's going well. Something as simple as that. It's a Hallmark card, for gosh sakes, people. You know, <laughs> it's something very basic, very simple. It does not require them to respond, but they, it leaves the door open that if they would like to respond, they can. You know, so that it's just, it's very innocuous. They know you're there, but you're there. You're not being intrusive is basically right. how I look at it. Mm-hmm. And I'll do that. And sometimes I get a response back and we talk for a little bit. Sometimes I don't, but, but at least they know that I'm, I'm there, that I'm a presence in their, in their lives, that I want to be present there for them. Right. Um, that being said, be safe, everyone. Uh, it's a very difficult time of year for many people. Yep. We do fit a lot of stuff into a little, little small space of time. So just be careful. Make sure if you're drinking, Uber it, lift it. <laughs> I think it's the new company. Um, cab it, you know, whatever you need to do to be safe and get home um, to your safe zones and stuff like that. So do what you need to do. Stay safe. Keep your loved ones safe. And we will be here next week.